Um, now let's move on to this menu on the left. Uh, what's all this? What's this all about? Now, first of all, you have to know that when you create a primitive, yeah, I can increase uh, the detail, the subdivisions, and you might think, yeah, well, how do I kind of actually go from this cube to creating, um, I don't know, a house? Uh, and the secret is that one, when, while this is a primitive, you can uh, change this all dynamically. If you click fill it, you can create it into a soft object. Um, but you cannot physically edit this yet. To do that, you must come up here. You'll see this make object editable. And if you remember, C on the keyboard does that. Now you'll see this has instantly changed. Up here, this has now become a polygon. And this is represented by this little triangle with points. And now, this is where this menu comes into play. Um, as you can see right now, I have deselected these two modes. We have this, the object, which allows us to move the object as a whole. And uh, basically makes these obsolete. As soon as I select this, can you see this unselects because you can't have this mode and this one selected at the same time. Well, you can, but they won't work. Um, now if I click this, it will allow us to select individual points and if I shift click on these can you see I'm creating and now you can see the kind of stuff that you might be used to uh, if you've used a 3D program before and this is when you start modeling stuff As you can see that I was creating points this allows us to select lines I'm gonna go up here to my select tool and uh, this allows me to just drag and hold and now I can um, start moving stuff around. I've created a little half pipe there, an uneven half pipe, but half pipe nonetheless. Um, yeah, so that just allows us to, to select edges, and this allows us to select polygons. Polygons are just these kind of squares or rectangles, whatever you want to call them, and you can move those dynamically also. Uh, these things all come into play with the structure menu which we have up here. Structure menu once again is incredibly um, powerful and this is where you will do all your modeling there. I'll probably have to do a separate modeling um, tutorial. This allows us to bevel edges. We can go to extrude which allows us to kind of extrude any selected faces and you can see now we're instantly um, starting to build. If I hit command select, command shift A sorry, that deselects everything in the scene which is quite useful. And here we've selected all the polygons and we're beveling all of them which is completely pointless. So we've now got something that looks like where Quasimodo might live. Um, let's move down to Sorry, undo that. If I go back up to here, you'll see that I can't use any of these tools. Uh, let's just point this bad boy out. This allows us to move the axis of the object we have selected. Um, if I go to rotate now, hit R. Let's go back to object mode. This whole object will move around where my axis is. And um, that can be useful if you want stuff to orbit so you would offset the axis and this would now orbit around wherever this point would be if I move this point even further away and go to rotate hit R oh, I keep forgetting to go back to object mode so you can see the obvious um, kind of benefits to that and if you want to bring it back um, go to functions uh, not function structure, sorry. Axis center object axis, and that will center your axis to the object. So now your axis is perfectly in the middle of whatever object you have selected, which can be useful. Um, I'm not going to cover these two, these are more down to texturing, and I'm not going to be covering texturing in this video. Okay, so uh, let me just check my little tick list here. Primitives done, left menu done. Materials. Uh, let's get rid of this horrible. Um, thing and I'm going to make a sphere again 
and I'm going to make a light hit E, move the light up I'm going to select it from the top and uh, move it towards the front so it's kind of lighting the whole front there we go um, now as you can see like I said before we have a basic grey and you can see we have the materials on here if I double click anywhere we have now created a new material and materials if I select the material it will appear here in the attributes I'm going to first of all apply this material by dragging it onto the object in question and now you can see we have a little representation of that up here if I hit render it's going to look the same because at the moment our material is just a basic shade of grey here by default we have specular and colour turned on for our material all these are, sorry excuse me oh. getting the dreaded dry mouth okay um all these are options which can be turned on in the material to make it um, more or less complex in different ways you can have uh, let's run through these real quick we have color by default this is the basic color of the material nothing too fancy there we can if we want you can change this color to a gradient maybe and uh, by clicking in here in the gradient you know once again this is so we've got half red, half white. Looks completely garbo. Let's make this radial. And it still looks horrible. Great stuff. Okay, um that's because of the way the kind of gradient is applied to the material, but that is once again uh something I'm gonna clear this. In which I will cover in another video probably. Specular is uh the kind of highlight that you see here. If I bring this up I can make this a lot wider by making the height I make it a lot brighter so now if I render this can you see we have a really brilliant hotspot on here and that can obviously be used to fake uh, different kind of material looks if we go here we have metal which uh, is not great considering my background is black but um, once that is played with it does make things look more metallic I'm gonna leave this on plastic you have the coloured option down there which you can colour your specular also illumination uh, I'm gonna leave that editor also assign if you wanna have a quick look to what objects your material is assigned to in the scene if I make a cube here and add my material to my cube and go back to my material go to sign you can see it's now assigned to my cube and my sphere and that's a good way of knowing what kind of um, objects that your material is assigned to specifically in a quick way. Now, as you can see like I said before we had um, not a lot going on in the scene at the moment. I'm going to create a sky object here and uh, can you see this is going to add kind of grey to the whole scene. I'm going to create a material for this. I go to colour and create a gradient and I'm going to make this vertical and if I apply this to my sky you will see we go from black to uh, if I rotate upwards white all the way at the top now this is in fact what we're going to do is on top of that we're going to create maybe three spheres by dragging them out now I'm going to move these spheres up I'm going to move this one out here and this one out here that's the original now as you can see even though there's three spheres here they're not reacting to each other specifically if I come into my basic and turn on reflection we can see now that we have something completely different going on we have um, they're reflecting the gradient we have the hotspot still they're reflecting the environment and this is such a radical change now by default the reflection will be applied to the whole object and unless you go in here and specifically tint your reflection you're going to lose all the color information you had in here before uh, the way to kind of get rid of this if you select texture in your reflection channel go to Fresnel 
and now the reflections will only happen more around the side and the middle will be just as it was before um, so yeah we got this kind of bowling ball scene going on actually I looked kind of cooler before so I'm going to uh, clear the for now out go back to our kind of uh, orange pinky balls innuendos again uh, down here we can blur the reflections and stuff so if you don't want the reflections to be as clear be aware though that this will slow your render down but as you can see the reflections are more blurred now uh, specular we've been through specular let's have a look transparency is for making things transparent ironically if I select now we can see that even the objects are completely transparent what you'll want to do is if you go to here and you whack up the infraction index you will then see your object again and you can see now we have more kind of glass like and this infraction uh, refraction is based on a real index of how uh, light kind of uh, reacts to the glass uh, I think water is about 1.6 maybe I'm not sure that might be glass I can't remember but uh, if you look up refraction indexes in the internet you can find out the exact refraction index of the material you're trying to make and that will come in incredibly useful when you are trying to uh, nail down the non -tick, um tick transparency when you're trying to recreate something in 3D. Uh, luminance is it basically makes your object glow. It's kind of like color but stronger. Um, it's not really applicable here. But if I want to create maybe um, a glowing sphere up here, I, I double click to make a new material. In fact, I have one already. I'm going to unclick color so it's completely black but tick luminance and drag that onto there now I've just realized that I've changed my whole sky object which was dumb I'm going to do this if you double click you can bring it up and it selects luminance and drag that onto my ball as you can see now we have a kind of white ball and this will show up in the hotspots as you can see and um, yeah one thing I want to point out as you can see I have this massive gradient on the scene which is making my my um, spheres here look really nice I'm trying to avoid seeing balls in case you haven't realized um, I'm gonna right click here go to cinema tags and this is once again really advanced stuff right here but the cinema tags are fairly friendly and easy to use I'm gonna go to um, compositing and as you can see I now have this little um, whatever that's called uh, applied to my sky if I go to scene by camera and untick and you see now even though this object is still here and if I render it's still affecting my scene when I come to render it will not appear so now if I render this out it will be completely transparent the background that comes in obviously useful uh, by itself so I'm going to leave that on actually no, in fact I'm going to delete it so as you can see now my gradient is still here but now it's going to appear in the background um, yeah I think that's about it for materials I mean there's other stuff you can do you can make you can add bump to your um, the bump basically relies on a black and white image so for texture here I'm going to go to noise as you can see now if I go into here I could edit this and here we can edit the basic strength but the long and short of it is, in fact I'm not going to apply it to my gradient, if I go to my um, spheres and uh, click bump and select texture maybe uh, a noise again you'll see that now these balls are kind of reacting to this uh, texture and that can obviously be useful for here we're giving them like an maybe an orange if you, uh, if you reduce this slightly and probably maybe made the scale of this a lot smaller you'd start to have the kind of orange skin effect or maybe a golf ball or some such thing I'm gonna tick bump um, 